If you've just nabbed yourself Google's refreshingly affordable Pixel 3a or the Pixel 3a XL, then have I got some hot tips for you. Here's just a selection of the best Android Pie features that you'll find stuffed inside these new Pixels. And don't forget, for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech, to plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, one of the best bits of Android OS is the customization. You can change pretty much everything you see on the desktops, add in some widgets, change the Google feed and all the rest of it. The best way of doing this is by long pressing on a spare bit of desktop space and then going to home settings. So for instance, if you don't like the Google app, which is basically just a personalized news feed, then no worries, just jump on into the home settings and then go to display Google app and just untick that box. Then when you head back to your desktops, Boom, no more Google Feed. You'll notice as well that when a notification pops onto your Pixel 3a smartphone that the corresponding app gets a little dinky dot up in the top right corner just to alert you to that notification's presence. Again, that's something that's very quickly and easily enabled or disabled. All you gotta do is jump into the home settings and it's the very top option, notification dots. And you just gotta untick that if you don't want those dots to pop up. Sadly, there's no way of getting rid of that annoying search bar, which is lodged here at the bottom of the screen, shunting all of your apps up the display. This is a Google branded handset after all, but you can always slap on a launcher of your own choosing. More on that in a bit. Now, when it comes to one handed use, the Pixel 3 is pretty dinky. Those stubby fingered users like myself might still struggle to reach all the way up to that notifications bar. And of course, the 3 XL is an absolute beast. But thankfully, Android Pie does include a little bit of one-handed help. So what you'll need to do on your Pixel 3a smartphone is head to the settings and then scroll down to nearly the bottom, hit system, and then up near the top here, you've got the gestures section. In there, you'll see the option swipe fingerprints for notifications. As you can see by the handy little animation there, this just allows you to swipe your finger down that fingerprint center in order to drag down the notifications bar. So just toggle that on and we're good to go. And as you can see with this option enabled, all you need to do is swipe your finger down that sensor and it drags down that notifications bar and you can also hide it away from view as well. Very, very handy, saves you from having to reach all the way up to the top of the screen and possibly putting your and thumb out a joint. And in this gestures menu, you've actually got a variety of other really helpful features as well. So for instance, the flip to shh, feature is very, very good. If you've got an incoming call or something, all you need to do is just flip your phone over and that basically says, do not disturb me until I flip my phone back the other way. Definitely have a bit of an explore of those options because there are some good ones in there. Now, if you want to quickly switch between your apps on the fly, there's a couple of ways of doing it. So for instance, say you're in the YouTube app, you want to open up the Spotify app, which you've had opened recently, just flick your finger up the screen from the home button. And then as you can see here, here's the Spotify app, tap, and we're into it. But there is an even faster way of flipping between them all as well. Basically, just hold your finger on the home button and then flip it to the right. And as you can see, you can then cycle between all of the apps that you have open at the moment. So for instance, we're in the Spotify app, we wanna quickly load up the YouTube app, there it is there, boom, nice and easy. It's also perfectly possible to split screen, in other words, have two apps open on the display at the same time, which is very handy here on the Pixel 3a XL, especially when you've got that nice spacious screen. What you'll need to do is jump into that recent apps menu just by again, just pulling up on that home button and then find the first app that you wanna multitask with. In this case, we're gonna do it with the YouTube app and then just long press your finger on the icon up at the very top. In the menu that pops up, you'll see that one of the options is split screen. So just tap that and you'll see that your spleen, your spleen is split in half. Your screen is split in half. And then what you need to do is basically just select the second app that you wish to multitask with. So in this case, we'll go for a bit of Spotify. As you can see there, your screen is then divided down the middle. What you can do is you can actually drag around this middle bar though, so you can uh, dedicate more of the screen to one app rather than the other. And we find this is particularly good if, for instance, you want to play a video, but at the same time, reply to some messages, browse the web, things like that. And what you can do then is just drag this little bar all the way up to the top then. As you can see, you can watch your video in that little pin there and still flip around and do whatever you like in this second app, it's really handy. Now, if your navigation skills absolutely suck, no worries. Google Maps will give you even more help to get where you're going on the Pixel 3a and Pixel 3a XL. Once you've locked in the route that you want to take, you'll notice that down at the bottom here, you've now got a Start AR mode. This is only available, of course, in the walking mode. It's still in beta at the moment, but it is pretty nifty. Just tap Start AR when you're ready to begin walking. And then what you'll see is basically the maps down at the bottom and the rest of the real life environment up at the top half of the screen. Just wave your phone around and you will see some ruddy big arrows popping up to point you in the right direction. It really is idiot proof. 
It's basically a very clever piece of image recognition software. It uses the Pixel 3 or the 3A XL's camera to basically determine key points in the environment, works out which direction you're actually facing, and then can point you off the right way to get where you need to go. It is still in beta, however, so it might be a little bit glitchy here or there. And of course, it only works in big cities, so don't expect it to work when you're out in the sticks somewhere. Our next tip for the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 3a XL is the driving mode, an easy and safe way to operate your smartphone while you're in the car. To access the Android Auto feature, what you want to do is go into the settings menu and then go to connected devices and then connection preferences. And down at the bottom, you will spot driving modes. Now you can manually turn on driving mode at any point just by tapping turn on now, obviously. Otherwise, there are also some automatic features for Android Auto as well. So for instance, whenever driving is detected using the likes of the gyroscope sensor, Sensor, or if you're connected to your car's stereo Bluetooth. In Android Auto, you get access to all of the features that you would most likely need when driving. So for instance, you've got a nice bit of sat-nav action, which you can access uh, down here below, otherwise you've got it there on the main screen. You can access your contacts as well, if you like, with just a quick tap here. And of course, you've got access to your music accounts as well, if you want to jam to some tunes as you're bombing down the M25. And at any point, you can also access the Google Assistant with a quick tap here, or by seeing OK Google. The OK Google functionality is especially handy when driving, of course, because it means you don't even have to look at the screen, you can just use your lovely lips. And like previous Pixel phones, the Pixel 3a and Pixel 3a XL can once again figure out what that annoyingly catchy tune playing on the radio is as well. What you want to do is jump into the settings and head to the sound section, and in here, towards the bottom, you'll find Now Playing. If you activate this feature, then your Pixel smartphone will automatically listen out using the phone's mic to any music that is playing in the general vicinity. And as you can see, you can get a full playing history as well, which is kind of spooky when it's just been sat in your pocket and it's picked up on all kinds of stuff. Because it tends to work a lot better for pop-friendly radio hits than it does for for instance, Viking Metal or anything a bit more niche like that. So it's not particularly good for someone whose tastes are a bit more limited like myself. Another returning feature for these new Pixel phones is the Active Edge sensor. Basically, just give the Pixel 3a or Pixel 3a XL a quick squeeze and you will launch the Google Assistant. Hooray! To customize this, you'll once again want to jump into the system settings and then go to gestures and you'll spot Active Edge right up there at the top. Now, if you find that you're constantly accidentally activating that assistant, you can thankfully bump up the sensitivity so it's not as easy to actually activate or you can just deactivate the option entirely. There's also an option at the bottom there to use the Active Edge sensors in order to, for instance, silence any incoming calls, though we're yet to find a scenario where that's particularly useful. Now, one of the new features tucked away in the Android Pie settings menu is, of course, digital well-being. I've never really seen the point in this other than going, oh my god, I'm wasting my life on social media and YouTube and crap like that. However, if you can get over the massive guilt trip, there is actually a quite useful feature in there, and it is the wind down feature. These are basically a series of nighttime tools which are quite handy when you're busy getting all snuggled up with Teddy. You can set this to come on automatically at a set time, so for instance, whenever you're about to head to bed. The grayscale feature is quite a nice way of just turning everything monochrome so it's a bit easier on the eye. Or alternatively, there's a bit of nightlight which doesn't turn everything black and white, instead it just filters the blue light in order to give a nice warm output. Again, very easy on the eye, helps you to get all rested before bedtime. And of course, you can schedule a bit of do not disturb as well, so your phone's not vibrating and dinging away all night long while you're trying to get some much needed kip. Now, as much as I like Google's Pixel launcher here on the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 3a XL, sometimes it's nice to get something a bit different, a bit fresher on the go. Or perhaps you just demand some deeper customization. Well, in that case, you're going to want to explore the wonderful world of launchers. You can download tons of new launchers from the Google Play Store, and lots of them offer a very unique and enjoyable experience. I've actually shot a video all about my favorite Android launchers that you can download and use right now in 2019. And I've also shot a follow-up video with some viewer recommendations as well, some of the Android launchers that you guys picked out for me. So go check those videos out for recommendations of some of the best launchers you can get to slap onto your Pixel 3a smartphone. And thankfully, changing your launcher is a piece of pie here on the Pixel 3a smartphones. Just head to the apps and notifications section in the settings and then tap advanced and then head to default apps. And there you'll see an option for your home app. It's set to the Pixel launcher to start with. Just give that a little tap tap. And as you can see, any other launchers that you've downloaded will be there available to use instead.
And finally, if you want even more tips or a bit of live support for your Pixel 3a smartphone if things are going really badly wrong, then just dive down into the bottom of the settings menu and as you can see here, there's a tips and support section that offers all kinds of articles to help you out. You can do a bit of a search for anything you need. And as you can see, there are some contact details in order to get in touch with Google and get some Android help. So right there is my full tips and tricks guide to help you get started with Google's Pixel 3a or the Pixel 3a XL smartphone. Have you got your own hot tip that you'd like to share, so to speak? Definitely let us know in the comments down below. And for more on the latest, greatest mobile tech, please do pop subscribe and do that notifications bell. Cheers, everyone. Love you.